I'm sure you've heard of hacking before, probably thinking of the nefarious character sitting in the dark basement that's dimly lit by a flickering monitor. But have you considered that hacking can actually be a legitimate profession? Well, stay tuned, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the different types of hackers and how you can get started. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Jen, this is Alt Function, and today we are talking about the different types of hacking, with a particular focus on how to get started if you are interested in becoming a hacker professionally and ethically, of course. To really understand ethical hacking as a broad concept, it's good to understand the other types of hacking as well. We've got the good guy category, ethical hackers, also known as white hat hackers, who use their skills to identify and fix vulnerabilities before the bad guy hackers have a chance to exploit them. They often work for companies or as independent contractors. The key components of ethical hacking are authorized access, vulnerability identification, security improvement, and following strict legal and ethical guidelines. Red hat hackers, which are similar to white hat hackers, but take a little bit more of an aggressive approach to penetration testing. They often simulate real world adversarial attacks. Now I have some bad guy categories, starting with black hat hackers. These are the villains of the cybersecurity world. They use their skills for malicious purposes, such as stealing data, disrupting systems, extorting money, or just causing general chaos for fun. Script kitties are less experienced black hat hackers, often using pre-written code or scripts to carry out attacks. You might think somebody new to the hacking game would not pose a threat, however, something to consider is that malware, ransomware, and other bad guy tool sets are becoming very available and popular in the digital underground and being sold as services, making even an unskilled script kitty a threat to be aware of. Gray hat hackers operate in a moral gray area. They may uncover vulnerabilities, but also might not disclose them in legal or ethical manners. They may also not have been given legal permission to penetration test an environment, creating a turbulent moral dynamic, and their actions can sometimes have unintentional consequences. It's important to mention that these are just general categories, and there can be overlaps between them. Motivations and actions of individuals can vary widely. All right, now on to ethical hacking, why it's important, and how you can become an ethical hacker. Ethical hacking is crucial for several reasons, starting with proactive defense. Ethical hackers identify vulnerabilities before malicious actors exploit them. This allows organizations to patch weaknesses and strengthen their security posture. Risk mitigation is another important part of ethical hacking. By simulating real-world attacks, ethical hackers help organizations understand their exposure to cyber threats, so organizations can prioritize their mitigation efforts. Another area that ethical hacking supports is compliance. Many industries have strict data protection regulations, like GDPR, CCPA, and HIPAA. Implementing ethical hacking can help ensure compliance with these standards. As always, very important business continuity. A data breach could be catastrophic for a business. Ethical hacking helps prevent such breaches, protecting revenue, reputation, and customer trust. All right, so now that we have some of the details on the why, let's get to the how, how you can get started with ethical hacking. If you are interested in ethical hacking, there are several paths that you can take. The suggestions I'm going to be making to you here today are assuming that you already have a baseline understanding of cybersecurity and that you already likely have experience or a couple base level certs like Security Plus and Net Plus. So one way to get started with ethical hacking is online training and courses. There are a ton of different certifications based specifically around ethical hacking. What you choose to do will depend on your experience level and overall goals. For getting your hands actually on the keyboard, I would recommend some certs like Pen Plus put out by CompTIA and GPen, which is a SANS course. These courses will help you get familiar with the technical side of ethical hacking. For a more advanced hands-on keyboard certification, I would recommend the OSCP. The CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification, is also highly regarded. However, it focuses more on the ethical processes and procedures of ethical hacking. Another key component, if not the most important part of becoming an ethical hacker is practice. This one is huge. A certification can show your capability to learn the material, but putting your hands on keyboard with the intention to learn will be the best way to position yourself ahead of competition. All right, and here's some ways that you can get that practice. There are subscription-based learning platforms that have modules and pre-built environments. These platforms are designed for people of all different skill sets to learn this is a really great controlled environment route, especially for beginners that may not have the resources to build at a home lab. To start out, two platforms I would recommend is Try Hack Me and Hack the Bot. Both are amazing and comprehensive for skill building. If you would like to customize your learning and kick it up a notch, you can build a home lab. A home lab is built out of virtual machines where you can practice using different hacker tools, hack your own systems, and really explore different techniques and capabilities. Some popular hacking tools are Nmap, Metasploit, Burp Suite, and Wireshark. All right, this is where I drop the disclaimer to only practice on your own infrastructure or ones that you have explicit written permission to practice on, like bug bounties, 
which is another fun way to practice your hacking skills. A bug bounty is essentially a reward system for ethical hackers. It organizations offer monetary or other incentives to individuals who can find and report vulnerabilities in their systems, software, or websites. Although, again, friends, make sure the company has a bug bounty program in writing before you go poking around. Legality and ethical practices are a core component of ethical hacking. All right, another way to get some practice and advance your career in ethical hacking is capture the flag events or CTFs. Participating in CTFs is a great way to challenge yourself and learn from others. This can also expand your hands-on keyboard techniques. Another imperative step to starting your career in ethical hacking is building a solid network. Connect with other ethical hackers through online communities like LinkedIn and Reddit. And if you can, attend conferences. In my opinion, community really is the key component to any professional development. So that's something that you could start today. Go build out a LinkedIn and start networking. I will have links below to my own LinkedIn and a handful of others that I think you should follow. But to sum it all up, ethical hacking is a dynamic and rewarding career field. It combines problem solving, creativity, and a strong sense of responsibility. Remember, ethical hacking is about protecting systems and organizations' assets, not harming them. If you're passionate about cybersecurity, consider exploring this exciting career path. And if you'd like to learn more, let me know in the comments. Thanks everyone for joining me here today. This is Alt Function and my name is Jen. If you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.